Hello, this is Swami Janeshwar. This is a talk from the annual conference of the Center for Non-Dualism in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, February 23, 2008. The talk is on theism, atheism, non-dualism, contemplation, and Shaktipata. For more information, please see the website centerfornondualism.org. I hope you enjoy the presentation. You said too many nice things, so now we're late. So I won't be able to say so much. So sometimes I have noticed that when a, a lot of what I do with people is involved in where there's not somebody speaking to an audience and the audience is quiet but is more interactive and sometimes it happens where your mind gets pushed in trying to understand some principle of how to do practice that is not about intellectualizing it's not but it's discussing well what do I need to do and sometimes that leads to a feeling of frustration and, and it's not in my heart, in all honesty, it's not in my heart a wish that anybody feel frustrated. But it's a predictable part of the journey. If you don't believe me, go look at Sutra 30 of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and he says it very clearly. This stuff comes along, it just comes, it's part of the deal. And suggests that the antidote for that is to stay focused. Stay focused and keep going. And often, when in one of those conversations, this frustration bubbles up, it'll come out different words, but it comes out something like, well, okay, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? You, you know that feeling? You just. And I find that over and over, the teacher within of this person, in moments like that, continually keeps coming out with one suggestion. We have a Sanskrit word for it called satsang. And in English, when you shop around for the words, we don't have precisely a good word for that. But one of them that I know that kind of works is fellowship. And if we put a tag in front of that and call it spiritual fellowship, whatever spiritual means, because we can debate about that, there's a spirit in there that sort of says it all. This path going within can be utterly frustrating. Because the only thing that has to happen is that everything that you think you are has to fall away. <laughs> that can be frustrating. And when I say fall away, I mean in terms of identification with it. I don't mean your personality goes away or in fact that anything really changes about who you are at the surface level. You still get to have all of your idiosyncrasies, all your charming little foibles and all that kind of stuff. It's what makes life fun because we're all different. So all you have to do is let go of everything. So is there any wonder that we get frustrated? And I say no. I don't care what the form is. I'm not, I'm not being a salesman and saying, we need to do this more. I don't care what the form is. I don't care where it is, if it's in your own living room with other people or or in a formal group that has a, a name, Center for Non-Dualism. Uh, it doesn't matter, in my opinion, what I'm saying. But there's really, 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 really something to this notion that says, hang out with other people. And I like to use the phrase, of approximate mind. I don't know that I've ever met anybody of like mind. It's, it's, it's a little too precise for me. But let me get in the same arena and that's close enough. And this is what we have and what we keep talking about. Bill and I are very close. Everybody on our council of the Center for Non-Dualism, I have high regard for, without exception. And you know what? We don't think alike. The thing that we have in common is that we understand that the wave and the ocean are one. That said, There are three things that I'm uh, 
trying to talk about in my waning time. One is about theism, atheism, and non-dualism. And as I wrote my notes for this, I said, that, I said, this is not possible to do this in 30 minutes. And, and yet, sometimes we have to do it anyway. And I think of it sometimes like juggling. Has you ever learned to juggle? I learned to juggle one time. I could juggle three things. And when you can get the juggling working just right, when you get in the rhythm, you've got those three balls or those three things flowing. You're not thinking. As soon as you start thinking, you drop a ball. When you're in the flow, it's, and you watch like the, you can't watch any one, or you, or you watch this one, you lose that one. So you just have to take the whole field in. And you juggle, and it's going, and you know when you're in the rhythm. And the, th and the balls are just going. So I'm taking three principles. And if we can juggle them well, I think they kind of do a nice little dance together in the... Theism, atheism, and non-dualism. How do I contemplate? What are the great contemplations? And the third is, what is Shaktipat? And how does it work? Fancy word for Shaktipat. Uh, the word we know is grace. There seems to be two major polarities happening in our country now and significantly more so in the last five years. I stumbled into the fact a couple years ago, I was looking at Amazon, and I was just curious, gee, what, what's the country buying these days? So I looked at the bestseller list on Amazon, you know, which it lists in an order. And to my shock, in the like top 10 or 15 or whatever the number is, there were two books on atheism. I was completely shocked to see that this was so prominent. And I wasn't interested in pursuing atheism. I sort of kind of fed up with the whole issue of theism or atheism or something. I just want to do meditation. But when I'm struck my curiosity, so I said, well, just for the sake of my own, I don't, I don't often read books anymore and just buy them. But I said, I'm going to find out. So I bought one of them. I said, this is saying something different than I thought. Then I bought another one. Then I bought another. Then there's like four authors or people out there. And it, and, it, and it really showed me something. There is a polarity going on in our country. And on one end of the polarity, and my words may not be perfect or precise in this, just approximate. On one polarity, there is absolute theism. Monotheistic religion it says that the only reality is that I am here and God as a being is there. And he, she, or it is managing the show, and that we're all familiar with that. The polar opposite ends up being called atheism. Now, as a fine point, they talk about weak atheism and strong atheism. It's the terms they use. Weak atheism simply says, I just don't follow what they're doing. Ah means without. It just simply means without theism. It's a very soft way of that, so it's not waving a flag. Strong atheism is the one that not only says that I'm simply not doing that, but also adds that, and that is incorrect. Hear the difference? What happens if you're a mystic or a yogi or whatever? There are so many things now happening in the metaphysical circles in our country. And if you look at what's happening there, and none of this is criticism, a lot of it is a, a reframe of theistic belief that God is there and I am here. It's a different version of it, but it's essentially similar. One of the common ones in, in our country is that we trade in Christ and we take up Krishna. I'm just using it as an example, and, I'm not, and there's nothing wrong with that. 